looked down at my watch to see what time it was, and I have two minutes after 11. I leaned over to Art and said, what time it is? And he had about a half an hour later. So I thought, well, I don't know who's right, but I guess I better side with him. <laughs> For your sake. Because you're probably saying, oh, no. Matthew chapter 6, if you would join me there. I thought, man, I've got an hour to preach. Matthew chapter 6. The title of this message, I, I just put in there, Living Above Worry. I didn't say living without it. I said living above it. This is not a message that I bring to you that I have mastered, and I am now a professional uh, person who does not worry. I have not arrived here. I don't bring this as someone who is just... Uh, Learned and schooled in it, and I've got it all down. No, I am a work in progress like everybody else. So don't think that, uh, you know, this is just, preacher's got this one nailed. No, I'm just like everybody else. We're going to look at this together because I need it just as much as anybody else and maybe more. Verse 24, Matthew 6. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one... And love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, nor yet for your body what you put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment, meaning clothes? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto a statue? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore of God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow was cast into the oven, Shall he not so much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Wherefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or what wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth what ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. A lot of old English there in the King James, but uh, drives home a point we probably all need to learn from today. Father, we pray, use this to minister to our spirit. Use it, Lord, to awaken us and revive us unto what your will is for our life, and help us today to be in tune with that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The story of a man who worried about everything, I mean everything. He was known as what we would call a worry wart. His, every, all his friends knew it, and one day one friend saw him, and he was as carefree and happy and go lucky as, as they come. And he, wow, he's never seen him like this. And he said, what, what happened? Something changed in your life. And he said, yeah, you better believe it. He said, I don't have any more worries anymore. He said, what did you do? He said, I hired a guy to do all my worrying for me. <laughs> he said, you did? He said, I didn't know that that was possible. He said, yep, I hired him and I told him, it's, I'll pay you to to worry about everything for me so I don't have to. And he said, well, that's great. What's it cost? He said, I'm paying him $1,000 a week. And the man was starting. He said, that's a lot of money. He said, I know you. He said, how in the world are you going to pay for that? He said, well, I told the guy. He said, that's your first worry. <laughs> Most of us would probably, in a moment of honesty, say this is one area that we probably need help in. We all 
would readily admit, we probably worry too much. Not just a little bit. We, we really are over the top. We live in a culture where it is deemed as normal to be loaded down with worries. There's always something to worry about. And if you run out of things to worry about, just turn on the news. And they will just load you down to where you just have to run over there, grab the remote, and turn it off. I, I, I don't want to hear no more. You know, when you look at everything that's going on in the current events of this country, that is enough to put us over the top in worry. And then somebody says, but preacher, you don't understand. I've got a business to run. How do I keep employees on the job when they can make more at home than working? And how do I keep stuff on the shelf when I can't even get it? And somebody says, but uh, I've got a teenager. And the insurance man told me that if they have one more wreck, they're going to drop our insurance. I've been through two insurance companies. I don't, I don't want to search anymore. And you think I got I, I, no worries? And then somebody says, but I just found out that the neighbor wants to sell his land to a developer who wants to put about 40 houses in right across from my house. I've got enough to worry about as it is. I don't need that. And then somebody says, well, I've been to the doctor, and he says he's afraid he didn't get all the cancer. Somebody says, I've got an upcoming procedure. I'm not supposed to be worried. I know people that had the same procedure. It didn't go well. Somebody says, well, my company got bought up, bought up by somebody else, another company, and they're going to consolidate different businesses, pull it all together. Job's going to be lost, and I probably lose mine, and I'm not supposed to worry. And then the preacher pulls out Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 through 34, and it sounds so poetic and so nice, the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, sound so wonderful, and you say, that ain't my life. And you look around and say, am I the only one in church that doesn't get it? That my life is completely different. You talk about not worrying. There is nothing in my life I don't worry about. I'm kind of like the guy in the uh, uh, mental ward that uh, he had a glass to the wall I read about. And, and the orderly there is monitoring a number of uh patience there and he just kind of let the guy go on but it went on all afternoon and he finally went over there and said hey you know give me that glass he's got the glass to the wall and he's listening he said give me the glass he said no listen for yourself so the orderly got down put his ear to it and he listened he doesn't hear anything he listens finally raised up and he said there's nothing there's no sound there he said I know it's been like that all day <laughs> some people when they run out of things to worry about then they really worry you know they're just wired that way they, they came into the world that way they were raised that way so therefore that's all they know is we just, we just have to worry you know well the word of God is clear verse 25 take no thought means don't give it a second thought. Don't spend too much time here. Don't worry about it. Don't be, contemplate over and over and over. And I don't care what you call it, whether it's concern or anxiousness or you're burdened. The bottom line is Jesus says, don't go there. Don't do it. This is not some request that he makes and says, well, if you can fit it in your schedule or maybe... Uh, Learn to live this way. I'd really appreciate it. No. Jesus is emphatic about it. If you're a child of God, we are not to be worry warts. Really. That's, that's, that's what he's saying to all of us. In John 14, 1, remember, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Most of our worries are born out of fear. Fear of what will happen. Fear of what didn't happen. Fear of what's coming. Don't live that way, he said. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing. 
Some people don't even have a clue what that would look like. They live their life so anxious and worried that is the, their life. Jesus said, no, don't do that. All the scriptures about worrying are addressed to Christians. Do you know that? Every bit of this, none of this is directed to unbelievers. Everything in your Bible about worrying is addressed to believers in God. Unbelievers need to be worried. Unbelievers need to be concerned. They need to be worried. If they're not right with God, they need to be worried about it. And they need to get right with God before it's too late. But if you're a child of God and your sins are under the blood and you've been redeemed as a born-again child of God, quit worrying. Give it to God. I struggle with the fact that there are some believers that can come to the cross in faith, give God their life, pray, be born again. The most important issue of life. And then go out and worry about the neighbor. Some little trifle with the neighbor or something to work and worry all about that. The biggest issue in your life is your soul. If you can trust God with your soul, why can't you trust God with other things? You know? The biggest issue of all, of all eternity, is your soul. And if you're right with God and there is no condemnation, why are you worrying about the car or the house or the yard? Or If you can trust the Lord with the number one issue, it ought, to, it ought to cause us to say, if he can do that, he can do anything. That's my take on it. Uh, there's three words here in this passage that I would really like for us to look at. The first word is this thing called faith. In verse 30, he says, If God so clothe the grass of the field, he's talking about wildflowers colors in the field. If that, and he can make the field so beautiful with, with these flowers, and then within just a matter of weeks, they're cut down, and they use those in Bible times for uh, starting fires. Dried grass, and you ever burn off a field that's dry? You know how fast it goes up? Well, that's what they use for kindling for the oven. And they, they cut that down and throw it into the oven. And he says, if, if God can make the field beautiful with wildflowers, and then they go out and they cut all that dead stuff down after a few weeks it's done blooming, and they use that for kindling in the oven, how much more are you important to him? It's called faith. And isn't that the issue here? He said, what? Oh, ye of little... Bank account? O oh, ye of little stature? O oh, ye of little help? No, he put his finger right on the issue, didn't he? O oh, ye of little faith. That's, that's the driving thing. That, that we should be so trustful of the Lord that whatever you and I encounter in life, that we're able to hand it over to him and say, Lord, I trust you with and then you fill in the blank. Whatever that driving issue is that's keeping you awake at night, that's worrying you, whatever that issue is, we have, I'm going to give it to you, Lord. Don't want to carry it. Some people worry about last week, and last week's gone. And some people worry about next week, and next week's not even here. We don't even have this evening, do we? And yet there's people that's worried about this evening. And we are to live in the moment because that's where the God is. He's in the right now. Every bit of the scriptures is all about right now, today. It's not next week. You're taking on a burden that you can't carry because we were not designed to carry next week's burdens. It's right now. Next week, if there is a next week, there will be grace for that. God's grace and God's power. It's like the frog that that called the psychic hotline. You ever hear about him? Called the psychic hotline because he was concerned about the future and uh, psychic uh, said, oh, I see in your future there's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful woman that's going to be very interested in you and want to know everything about you. Just, just got to know it all. He's like enamored, like, wow, wow. When am I going to meet this beautiful young woman? And the psychic said, Next week. Next week's going to happen. And the, and the frog said, well, well, where will I meet this beautiful young woman? And the psychic paused for a while and said, well, you're going to meet the, this beautiful gal 
in biology class. <laughs> Folks, there's a reason why God doesn't disclose everything. There's a reason why he doesn't tell us the end from the beginning. He knows the end from the beginning, but he, he gives us today what we need for today, and tomorrow he will give us what we need for tomorrow. He doesn't unload everything on us that's coming a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. We know enough for today. And next week or next month, where we get out there, there will be grace for that day. And if you and I walk by faith, we will get through all of it by the power of God. Faith is the key. There's no, there's no magic bullet here. I read uh, an article this past week that uh, just gripped me, and I went in a whole different direction. This come uh, out of the Cincinnati Enquirer. It was wrote by a fellow by the name of Jason Williams, and I wrote this down. I didn't want to print it out because I think it was about 12 pages. And I said, I just, I just wanted the opening of the story. He said, we said goodbye on Monday evening. The last of our cicadas in our neighborhood were now on life support. <laughs> I snatched one off of a tree and handed it to my four-year-old son. Is it real, Roman asked, meaning, is it alive? The cicada slowly crawled on his hand. I said, Roman, that's probably the last one you'll hold, buddy. I snapped an iPhone photo of my son holding the cicada. But I want them still, he replied, and he threw it up in the air to let it fly away. It went about two feet in the air and then torpedoed right back to the sidewalk. The nightly cicada hunts were over. I miss the cicada already. Roman, my son, will be 21 years old the next time we see brood X cicadas. The storyline goes on about how him and his little boy bonded out in the yard because his little son wanted to go out every evening and hunt cicadas in the yard and how much fun that little four-year-old had finding a little bug with red eyes. The rest of us say, be gone. <laughs> but you know, let's back up a little bit. Matter of weeks ago, they were singing in the trees louder than all get out. Tony and Diane's house, they were covered up with them. Charles and Juanita's house, they were covered up with them. They were as loud, they could hear them in the house. Close the doors, pull the windows down, you could hear them in there. Go up 129, they were flying into my truck. And when they, make, when they hit the windshield, they make a mess. I heard all kinds of people complaining and worrying about the locusts and their back and everything that they were saying. And you know what? In just a matter of weeks, where are they? As outside of a few areas, we're not hearing them like we was. And that kind of came and went. And isn't that like most of our worries? They're there, and oh, it just grips our heart like we think that they're going to be here forever. And in a matter of weeks... We've cashed that in and we found something else to worry about. That's gone. Now we got something new. And we just wring our hands and worry and fuss about all this and that. And Jesus said, no. Oh, ye of little faith, even in the middle of it, get your eyes on him. The second word that's in this is the word father. Look at verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek and the believers too if I can add that, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. When you and I are worried about stuff, you need to focus your attention on your heavenly Father. And you can't worry and have faith in the Father at the same time. It just doesn't work that way. Either you have faith or you're worrying. If you're worrying, you don't have faith. What? It doesn't, you can't have both. One will cancel the other one out. Our faith and our trust in God should be so cemented that it doesn't matter what comes. That we trust the Heavenly Father. He knows all things. And we put our faith in Him. Worry is a choice. Just like faith is a choice. I choose to believe. Or I choose to worry. That's a choice. Say, so, well, you know, I can't help it. Yeah. It's a choice. 
When those thoughts of doubt creep in, you have a choice. You can, you can run them off and say, I choose to believe and quote some scripture and sing a song or whatever and, and set your affection on things above or you can choose to set your affection on things of this earth and say, well, I, you know what? I'd rather worry a little more. Not quite ready to give it up. I'm, I'm going to worry. Mm. Romans 8, 28 says, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. Philippians 4, 13, you memorized it. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Verse 32, Your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of these things. And look at verse 8, same chapter. The end of the verse says, He knows what you have need of. How soon? Before you even ask. Before you get all worried. And before you go through all those gyrations of how are we going to meet all these needs and how is this all going to get done. And then you finally get around to pray. He already knows before you go through all those different steps until you finally get around to praying about it. He knows already. Story goes about a little boy that his mama gave him a quarter for milk for school and a sack lunch and off he went. And uh, when he come home that night, he still had to quarter. She said, well, did you, don't they sell milk? He said, well, they had it, but it was only a dime. It's only I couldn't get it. All, all I had to quarter. <laughs> little boy doesn't understand the concept of money yet and what things cost. But you and I are just like that little kindergarten kid off to school we don't realize the promises of God. We don't grasp the enormity of everything that's in this book of what God has promised us, exceeding precious promises, and, and so therefore we'd much rather work. Instead of claiming the promises of God and walking by faith and trusting the Father, committed to Him, no, 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 no. I think I'm going to, I'm going to worry a little more. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon Him. Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. That word cast means literally exactly what it says. I fling it out. I get rid of I throw it. Meaning that I throw all my concerns and all my worries and all my fluster, I throw it into the arms of God. Because He can handle it and I can. Casting all my care. But the problem, I think, is we're like fishermen who cast. And what do they do next? We just reel it right back to themselves. Sunday morning we come in and we say, I'm going to get rid of this once and for all. And we give it to Jesus. And we walk out and out in the parking lot somewhere, get in the car and going down through town, we reel it all back in and say, well, I'm going to worry about it another week. Over and over and over. Peter, that's not what Peter meant. He said, give it to Jesus and let Jesus have it. Quit. Picking that burden up, saying, well, I'm, I'll carry that another week. Over and over and over, that cycle goes. There are temptations that come to me that I need to just keep worrying about it some more. And I have learned to discipline myself that when those inclinations come, I give it back to God. It's yours. The last word, that, and i got to move real quick, is in verse 33. It's that word, first. Seek ye when... First, the kingdom of God. That tells you how long you need to hang on to worries. When they come, discipline yourself. As soon as it comes, I'm going to give it to God. The problem is, we, we have turned pro on worrying. We're not amateurs. We, we're good at it. And we're so good at it that it can be full-blown worry before we even realize we're worrying. You know what I mean? We, we, we are so em embedded in it and it is so prone to it that we can work ourselves up into a timber about something before we even realize we're worked up. Everybody else around us knows, but we don't catch on till we're just ready to blow a fuse. Seek first. When those problems come, make a choice. I choose to not worry. That is a mental choice. This past year up to right now has been worrisome to me about a lot of things. 
I've got, and I've told you before, this list that I keep on my desk of a t to do, and it's projects and and stuff that uh, I'm obligated to, that I've got to get done. And you know what? The most of it I've been working at for over six months, and I ain't making no headway whatsoever. I mean, there they lay. And every day I look at that. And it has become, and it has always been, but it's really become a prayer list. It's not just what I'm supposed to do. It's what I'm praying over every day. God help me work through that. But it has also become a worry list. That when I look at it, then I'm pro none of this is getting done. It doesn't matter how hard or how much time I put into it. Nothing is being accomplished. And that's just the sign of the times. And I can point my finger at a dozen different reasons. None of that's getting done and running in circles. The tendency is for me to stress about that. That's why I say I, I am not... I don't have this nailed down, but I know what the Word of God says. And the only thing that I can do when that moment comes is to bow my head and say, Lord, this is yours. I can't carry this. It's yours. And that's, there is no magic silver bullet. There, it is faith in God. We give it to Him. Can you, can you do that as well? Can you, can you let it go? Can you say, Lord, this is you? Whatever that is that's in your life, can, can you just give it to God? And you may have to do that a dozen times a day. Stop, give it back to him. When the words come, and eventually you will learn that immediately when that comes, you'll, you'll feel it come in, creep in, and you'll know what to do with that. Give it to God. I let it go. Bow your heads. Let's pray. Father, you give us this word. That means it's true. You gave it to your believers. That means we're obligated to keep this commandment as well. Forgive us, Lord, for when we want to stress out and worry. Forgive us, Lord, for all the times that we did not trust you. And Lord, right now we want to somehow, to the best that we can, give those issues to you. Lord, we, there are people here who are dealing with some very serious issues. Very serious. But even in that, Lord, you call us to faith. And Father, we want to hand them over to you right now and say, in the name of Jesus, help me. I release it to you. Help me to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. Help me to surrender this to you and keep it surrendered. And Father, however you choose to work it out, I want to be in agreement with you that your will is done. However it is, however, Lord, you choose to resolve this, I give it to you. And I trust you because if you can save my soul, you can do anything. And I believe on you. And it's all yours now, Lord. Help me to walk by faith and in full obedience to your word and your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Maybe I was preaching to myself today. Maybe there's somebody else out there that needed that. I don't know. All I know is that's what the Lord told me to share with us. So God bless you. If you're struggling, you've got to keep the faith. Don't let the world get you down. You keep your eyes on Jesus. Seek first the kingdom of God. Have faith. God can take care of you. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask Robin if she will close the service with prayer. God bless you for being here. Go out and be a blessing today to somebody else. Robin, would you pray for us? Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be in your house. We thank you, Lord, that we can hear your word. We thank you that we can worship you. 
Lord Jesus, let us go out this week and share your goodness and your kindness and your love to all that we need. Let us, Lord, not to worry, but to place all things in your hands. In your precious name we pray. Amen.